I have played many horror games in my time. Some have shocked me, some have disturbed or even unnerved me, others have simply stressed me out. And, well, some were bubsy. But if you followed the channel for a while, you'll know that one horror game in particular holds a special place in my mind. Scratches. Not only have I called it one of the scariest games ever, but outside of the actual game, it's fascinating. You can no longer buy the game legitimately. You have to earn it by being an active member of the developer's Discord server. The game was developed in Argentina in 2006, a place which, at the time and still to a degree today, does not have a major game development culture, let alone a horror culture. And since then, in the 14 years since Scratch's release, Sandscape, the studio set up by key members of the development team, have only released one other game. The good, but short, point-and-click adventure game, Serena. But recently, after years of anticipation and suspense, they've released a demo for their next game. Asylum. So let's jump in. Firstly, let me list some things for you. Resident Evil 7, Alone in the Dark, Scratches, The Shining. These are all games which open the same way, with a nice long drive. Well, The, the Shining isn't necessarily a game, <laughs> but boy, they do be playing. These all start the same way and all establish the same thing. Isolation. In the realm of horror, your weakling flesh legs can only carry you so far, so cars are almost always used to imply distance, or perhaps more specifically, distance from happy nice things. And guess how asylum starts? Vroom vroom, it's your boy seclusion. Oh, uh, also... <laughs> hmm? The car intro can be attributed even more closely to the spooky mental institution subgenre. Just look at Session 9, Outlast, Shutter Island, and so on. And as soon as we're out of the car... Whoo! <sighs> Can you feel that? Scratches is back. And this time, it has a better aspect ratio. Uh, but wait, what is that? Dear lord, that's a human. Scratches didn't have those. It had disembodied voices and some weird cat in the basement and that was about it. And not only do we get an earthling friend to interact with, but we also get a cool new dialogue system. It's kind of like L.A. Noir's interrogation system, but instead of discussing grisly crimes with criminales, you're discussing renovation logistics and crippling personal trauma. And after this, we begin to explore this quaint little nightmare zone. But first, we must discuss what one must do to be committed into such a frightful institution. Luckily, there's a document that tells us this, and here are some of the highlights. Imaginary female trouble, politics, seduction, and disappointment. The war. Five different varieties of masturbation, liking mist, abusive walkthroughs, and rumor of husband murder. I swear I've heard that one before. What I've also heard before is my brain screaming, <laughs> oh hey, would you look at that? I'm frightened. Because this game is, just like Scratches, a bit on the spooky side. And by a bit, I of course mean... And not only because the game inherits Scratches' eerie stillness, dark themes, and intentionally suspenseful pacing, but because they take these things and wrap them in a setting that has reached Silent Hill level decay and amnesia level atmosphere. Now, some of you will dislike this setting because it's admittedly quite cliché. I mean, a supposedly haunted asylum? Come on, that's a story as old as asylums themselves. Plus or minus a few administrative shutdowns. So it's a silly choice for a setting, right? <laughs> right? No. No, it's not. Be gone from me, fool. I think I have to explain cliches to some of you. Clay Chi. Is that it? Click Che. No, that's. Kleish. Google.com, a site I often use to Google things, describes a cliche as a phrase or opinion that is overused and betrays a lack of original thought. But the word I really want to focus on is overused. Does something being overused inherently make it bad? No, of course not. It just means it holds less initial notability. Let's take a look at the game No Players Online, a short horror game which has you joining a haunted server in an FPS game. Now that's a cool concept. It's original, so long as you avoid creepy pastas, and as such it received quite a lot of attention after its release, and deservedly so. But imagine that it wasn't original. Would No Players Online stand out in a world where haunted servers were as commonplace as haunted asylums? I'm not sure it would. Not because it's bad, but because it has a lot of competition, and the short, proof-of-concept feel of the game may not cut it. But in this situation, I know a game that definitely would stand out. Pagan Autogeny. Yes, take a shot if you're playing the drinking game. Autogeny has a very similar setup, but ultimately does a lot more with it. In this scenario, Pagan Autogeny would be a cliched, but still excellent and notable game. So does it matter that Asylum takes place in a... in a... what? 
was it? Sanitarium? Not really. At worst, it would be forgettable, and at best, it could join the pantheon of genre-defining titles that were also cliched. A cabin in the woods and an old creepy manor have been Sanscape's last locations, and those games were great. Hell, you can even use cliches as a source of originality. Movies like Cabin in the Woods and Scream are perfect examples of media that embrace cliches to make a notable new idea. So the fact that a cliché is considered a strictly negative thing bothers me. There is a word, however, that carries an almost identical meaning but doesn't have the same reputation. That word is... Meme. No, I'm not joking. Here's a little side question for you. Do any of you remember a game called Ex Mortis? It was a point-and-click adventure game from the 2000s which traumatized young Pentacus. Well, Asylum reminds me of that, but, you know, not horribly aged. Another question, can you read? If not, that may be problematic. Asylum has so many alphabet bits in it, and that will put some people off, but me, I'm a huge fan of these things. And it definitely helps that the game is beautifully written. Honestly, it beats most other games and many actual written stories in terms of straight-up prose quality. Though, much like one of its major influences, Hewlett Packard Lovecraft, it's not the most succinct. But again, that's a matter of taste and I find these things to be delicious. It may just be recency bias, but I think the writing is even better than Scratch's, and that is saying something. A gloomy forest bordered the grounds of the Institute conferring a pronounced sense of isolation. This is good because it works as both a colourful world-building piece, and it also works as a replacement for what I was about to say. Long wood beasts tremble me when I'm alone. That being said, the writing isn't all perfect and refined. Are you enjoying the demo, comma, Bruno? Oh yeah, um, this is just a demo. I kind of forgot that, to be quite frank. Most demos are not several hours long, and less still make you forget that it's an actual demo. At least until Bruno comes along, god... Damn it, Bruno. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, as the game has been in development since before we learned how to smelt bronze, but I am surprised that a game that has been in development for so long is actually... good? This year just gets weirder and weirder. Hey, do you want to hear something horrible? Now you're probably wondering, is this bathroom up to modern hygiene standards? We'll get to that, but also... What was that noise? Well, friends, it was simply a case of NICE AUDIO and the game is full of it. Rather than having the focus on music like Scratches did, Asylum focuses on the ambience. Wood creaking, fluorescent bulbs humming, footsteps on unkempt tile, breathing, weeping, laughter, the silent cries of distant asbestos removers, all of these form a woeful choir of unease, matched only by the oppressive silence that engulfs you through every other moment. It's wonderful. But holy hell are the doors loud! Now, one thing Sanscape has always been transparent about is influences. Specifically when it comes to movies and books. I mean, Scratches has an artistic man moving into a long abandoned and secluded manor with spooky noises, hidden rooms and clues leading to a wealthy family's forsaken child. I wonder if I've seen that one before. And Asylum has an old sanitarium that is almost beyond repair, being prepared for a very swift reopening despite literally all sense warning against it, while the dark truth of the place is slowly uncovered through old records. Once again, Hmm. I would never consider these games to be rip-offs or derivative in any real way, as the pure quality of the games gives them their own identity while also paying an obvious homage to their predecessors. You see, if something is inspired and good, it's a love letter. If something is inspired and bad, it's a rip-off. Asylum is a love letter to horror. PlayStation All-Stars was a rip-off of Smash Bros. The severed heads I keep in my freezer are both, but in a much more literal sense. Overall, I've loved Asylum so far and I cannot wait to see the full game. There are one or two things I miss from Scratches, one being the lack of other people. Sure, you had phone calls, but that just furthers the idea of insulation. Having others in the Asylum makes you feel less lonely, but overall, I think it has its own kind of potential. Secondly, the ending of the game, being a demo and all, is a bit abrupt. You were expecting me to cut away there, weren't you? <laughs> I'm not that predictable, you stupid son of a- While playing the game, one of the things that kept popping up into my head is this game would be really cool in VR. So I decided to message the game's director, Agustin Cortez, and I asked him, hey, are there any plans to implement VR support for the game? And it turns out, yeah, there is. 
And given the fact that many VR games use the sort of point-and-click model of using teleportation to move rather than locomotion, that means this game will work very seamlessly in VR. And that about covers it for the Asylum demo. Thank you very much for watching. You can follow me on all the links on screen, including Patreon where the following people have consistently donated at a high tier. Firstly, I has ID, truly a scholar, saint, gentleman and or gentlewoman. When it comes my time to haunt the earth, you will either be first or last, depending on whichever way you prefer. Do make sure to DM me that. I would hate to get the wrong choice. Secondly, Ernst the Ace for donating at a tier I thought no one ever actually would. I'm actually quite speechless. Once again, when it comes my time to haunt the earth, I will choose between three and five selected individuals of your choosing to torment forever. I didn't list that on the rewards section, but that is, that is included. Thirdly, I bumped into this weird looking guy with the, uh, the orange suit. He just handed me this envelope full of, like, I think it's money? I don't know, it hurts to look at, and when I give it to a bank, people give me frightened looks and then just start handing me coins. So, um, that's pretty cool. I can only assume he's a patron as well, so, um, you know. Big thank you to him, whoever he is. Please don't harm me. And finally, this picture was posted through my letterbox the other day. A note was attached which simply said, Praise Teeps, elsewise this will be more reality than you are ready for. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'm going to assume I should praise Teeps and encourage you to do the same thing. So once again, I say, Praise Teeps. Now can I, uh, now can I do the, the abrupt ending joke? <laughs> is this a good time for it? Is this... Is this a good time for it? No? Okay.